Welcome. Over the last few weeks, we have explored water as a system. We have discussed the importance of the physical spaces of water in terms of long-term impact, and we have examined the role of specific institutions. We have come to understand that many of our contemporary structures are the outcome of specific ways of thinking, of values and cultures, and the changes over time. After centuries of living in harmony and in close connection with water, our water values have changed. Starting with industrialization, and particularly in the 19th and 20th century, people have tended to think in terms of resisting water. They have come to rely on public systems and often very large infrastructures for energy generation, such as the Three Gorges Dam in China. They have defended themselves against water with large dikes and dams, such as the Afsluit Dike in the Netherlands. These large infrastructures have had benefits for people's lives, but they have also had many negative side effects for humans and non-humans. Many of the contemporary catastrophes that we're experiencing are the result of our own making and stem from the absence of a holistic approach to living with water. Our decision to settle in low-lying areas and to rely on defensive infrastructures such as dikes, rather than living on higher ground, can lead to extensive flooding, to loss of lives, buildings and income. Many cities have experienced floods over time. Low-lying areas in Tokyo, such as the Shitamachi, have always been at risk of flooding, compared to the higher grounds of the Yamanote where the wealthier people, such as the samurai, traditionally lived. Working class people pay the highest costs. In the Great Flood of Hamburg in 1962, areas in Wilhelmsburg were flooded that were traditionally home to lower income groups. Absence of long-term planning to protect all parts of the population has led to loss of life, such as with the flooding of low-lying areas in New Orleans in 2005, after Hurricane Katrina. The flooding after Hurricane Harvey further demonstrates the problem of land use planning that allows the dirty waters of refineries and other industrial sites to flow into residential areas. Most recently, in 2021, flooding in New York brought to the foreground the danger of living in basements. The last decade has provided many examples of water-related disasters induced by climate change. The flooding of subway stations, landslides in Peru and in Japan, rivers that left their riverbeds in Germany and Belgium, all demonstrate the vulnerability of the structures that we have created in the recent decades. Flooding, which used to be beneficial for nearby territories by providing soil nutrients, has become primarily a threat. From being beneficial and necessary to life, water has become a danger. Access to shipping water has allowed the growth of many cities, such as New York. But rising seawater levels threaten their future. The giant structures of the recent past have an impact on our current thinking and the future, an effect that we call path dependence, in line with discussions in the political sciences. We need to overcome path dependencies. This concept of path dependence captures the notion that structures and decisions of the past effectively impact the future. Because of the structures that exist, the way that we have shaped our environment, the places where we live, the laws that we created, and the institutions that we rely on. The strategy of resisting water has effectively become part of our culture. Many contemporary projects perpetuate this idea on an ever-increasing scale. Think about the proposals for new islands as flood protection or for a dike across the North Sea. Developing new water values focused on resilience first of all means rethinking the values that we have used to shape our environment over the last decades. Shifting our approach towards ma water management from resistance to resilience, requires new governance systems, new technologies, and new narratives. The Dutch project, Room for the River, is one example of how we can respect the flow of water and live with it in a resilient way. 
In line with this way of thinking, we argue that we need to study and understand the past to design the future. This can happen through a better, more thorough understanding of historical structures and the preservation of historic buildings that serve as reminders of the past and that help us understand the institutions and cultures associated with them. Using them as heritage sites and institutions can help address contemporary problems.